Hey everybody, this is Zeno and welcome to the Dynamic Prepper. Today I'm going to be taking a look at a couple of wallets by Travex. This is the original and this one over here is the Axis. I actually first heard about Travex uh, back in March of 2015 and since then I've seen reviews around the internet and some ads on Facebook and things like that and maybe you have too and I've always been interested in uh, Travex wallets. They definitely look cool, they got a rugged aesthetic, they look durable, they got a tactical feel to them. It looks like a great EDC wallet. And so very recently, uh, Travex actually contacted me and uh, said, hey, hey, we love the channel, love the videos. Would you be interested in uh, doing a review if we send you a few uh, of our wallets? And I said, uh, well, thank you very much for the generous offer. Um, I would love to do a review of Travex wallets because I already own one. All right, so let's get into this. So I bought this wallet back in November of 2015. So I have been carrying this wallet every day religiously for over nine months. So I've got some experience with it. And one of the things I was looking for when I was sort of seeking out a new wallet was something that was minimalist in nature and rugged. Those were my two criteria. For those of you who have been following the channel know that I've been trying over the past year to really sort of minimalize my EDC. Not that I want to carry, you know, less stuff, but I wanted it to be more minimalist in nature without sacrificing usability. And getting a uh, more functional wallet was something that I really wanted to do. And uh, I've traditionally used, you know, the leather bifold wallets. And I've had a problem with leather bifold wallets really holding up over the long term. So durability was another thing that I was really interested in. And I actually saw a review for the Travex wallets out on uh, the Loadout Room, loadoutroom.com, uh, which is a great review website. It's run by a bunch of uh, uh, U.S. Special Forces operators, and they do great review videos and, uh, and articles and blogs and stuff like that out there. Uh, you should check them out. So I saw it out there uh, last year and said, I got to get me one of those. So since I already own a, uh, a Travex original wallet, and Travex was nice enough to send me one, another one here, I'm actually going to give this away. So uh, stay tuned till the end of the video where you will get all the information that you need to enter to win a free Travex original wallet. So stay tuned. I'll show you how to how to pick this one up. So uh, I'm going to set this aside because we're not going to open this because this could be yours. So we'll put it right over there and we're going to talk about the original and then we're going to take a look at the access. See the pros and cons, see how they relate to each other um, because you know this is a great wallet but there's a few things I would have changed on it personally. We'll see maybe how the access holds up to that. So first of all let me say that this is an extremely durable wallet. One of the problems that I have with uh, Travex wallets, and I'm not trying to brag or anything, but I have a physically demanding job. And it's, uh, it's, it's rough, it's rugged, it's, it's a lot of effort, it is rigorous. Um, when I get off work, it's, it's buckets of sweat. It looks like somebody hosed me off. And one of the problems I've had with, with uh, wallets over the years is they literally rot out in my back pocket. They're just exposed to the sweat and, and everything. My butt is not a great environment. And uh, so they get, they get soaked and they just the stitching rots out and they get funky and they just don't hold up. And uh, switching over to the Travex, one of the things I was a little concerned about was the fact that this is mostly metal. The front here is aluminum, aircraft quality aluminum. The back here is an electrostatic coated cold rolled steel. It has mil-spec eyelets on it uh, here with uh, some paracord that holds it together and a, and a uh, elastic uh, strap band here that holds the whole thing together with some hook and loop tape, some Velcro. Getting a little hairy, but that's all right. It still works great. And one of the things I was a little concerned about was that it is made of metal is, is how would it hold up in my back pocket being exposed to, you know, the every day, the, the sweat and the, the dirt, the, 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 the rugged use that I put through it. And then of course on the weekends, hiking, camping, fishing, all sorts of different stuff and going to the gym every day and running and going to the, the, the martial arts studio four days a week. And you know, how is this thing really going to hold up to, to that, you know, use and the sweat and everything else being that it's metal. 
And uh, to be honest with you, it's held up really, really well. I've been surprised. I've been using this now for eight months. You can tell it's been used. You know, it's got some salty sweat residue and it's a little bit of wear and tear, but for the most part, it's pretty good. The only corrosion that I've had on it is right there, right there on the little O-ring there. Um, a little bit of corrosion, but not much. And these are actually replaceable. This strap with the eyelets and everything and the 550 uh, paracord there is all replaceable. I think the rebuild kit costs like six bucks and you can throw that away and put the new one on and you're good to go. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, but the backing plate and the front plate, that is all held up really, really well. This electro, this E coating that they put on, this electrostatic coating that they put on this steel backing plate is super durable. I haven't scratched it, chipped it, nothing. Um, a little bit of it um, is starting to kind of get a little rubbed away there on the tip of the, the uh, bottle opener there, but for the most part, it's been holding up really, really well. Let's put my stuff back in here. Whoops. Stick to the table. So, uh, this is actually not as many cards as I typically keep in here. I took, uh, you know, all my credit cards and ID and stuff out of there. Um, so, you know, I've actually had this thing so packed full of cards in the past that you barely can get the, uh, the Velcro over. Now, they, send, they sell a longer strap. They call it the high roller, which allows you to increase the capacity of the, uh, uh, of the wallet. But I've never really needed it. Um, the few times that I've sort of over, overloaded it, it's only been for a short period of time. And for the most part... Um, you know, carrying all the cards that I carry, a little bit of cash, maybe a couple receipts. I've had no problems with the size of the wallet. It's always held everything I needed to hold. Things don't fall out. I've never had a card fall out of it or lose anything out of it or anything like that. Um, comes with a bottle opener right there, which of course, you know, everything's got to come with a bottle opener, especially if it's, you know, for guys. You know, if you're a dude and you have like EDC gear. You probably have like nine bottle openers on you at all time. Evidently, there's people out there that drink a lot out of bottles. I'm not one of them. I've never actually used it. I'm sure it works great. I've never used it, but uh, it's there. Uh, we have a little lanyard hole there, too. Uh, this little notch over here is actually for a bag. If you watch their video on their website, uh, they actually designed this with these finger grooves there that you would put the handle, the left side and the right side, handle of a plastic grocery bag on each side, hook it on each side, and then carry it. Um, because evidently people do that. Um, one bag. Okay. So, but anyways, that was designed for a, a, a unique thing, but that's what it was designed for. And uh, I've never used it for that, but it's certainly interesting. Uh, but we have the lanyard hole, we have the bottle opener, and uh, so a couple extra features that come on it. Um, so that's nice. I, you know, I've seen people that attach it to their keychain or put a carabiner on it and hook it onto their uh, belt loop or something like that. I've never done that. I've always just carried it in my pocket, back pocket. I've never carried it in my front pocket. I don't like carrying too much stuff in my front pockets. Um, so I, I've been, this has been pretty much exclusively in the back pocket. One of the things I was slightly worried about, especially with this being a metal wallet with lots of, you know, jagged edges and stuff like that, is that it would wear a hole in my in my in my jeans and in, in work pants and stuff like that never had that problem um, I've had problems with traditional wallets you know after a while wearing uh, holes and stuff like that in the wall but this thing is so thin even though it's made out of metal it's so thin that it really doesn't put a lot of wear and tear on the fabric of your pockets and I've had very minimal wear on the back pockets of my shorts and jeans and stuff like that from wearing uh, from using this wallet for the last uh, about nine and a half months. So that actually surprised me. I thought it was just going to start tearing holes in all my pants because it's made out of the metal, but it really hasn't done that at all. And uh, I was also a little concerned about, you know, sitting in the car you know, with a metal wallet in my, ba in my back pocket, if that would um, do anything to, you know, the chairs or the seats in my car or something like that. Absolutely nowhere. Uh, more so than you would get from any other kind of wallet. So the fact that it's a metal wallet really doesn't advance the wear on things you sit on or things you wear or anything like that. Um, it is a uh, an RFID resistant wallet. And uh, interesting factoid here, and I know zero about what I'm talking about here. So uh, don't read too much into this. But one of the things that I found is that I tested 
And I don't use RFID on my credit cards very much, but I did actually test it with this wallet. I did use it on one of my credit cards and it didn't work. That means this thing protected the wallet and didn't, or protected the card and didn't allow the signal to get into the card. So it is an RFID resistant wallet. You know, with my credit cards, it does not allow the RFID readers to read the cards in the wallet at all. I've never been able to successfully use one in the wallet. But here's the interesting part. My corporate ID, my company ID for where I work, we use proximity cards. That's what that's called when you have a card that you just kind of flag in front of something and it opens a door or if you have a smart credit card with the RFID, the uh, uh, radio frequency identification, like uh, Wave Pass, or excuse me, uh, PayWave, PayPass, Express Pay, Zip is another one um, for, you know, Visa, MasterCard, Discover, American Express, that sort of thing. You just kind of like wave them in front of the reader and it just it just picks it up. That's what those are. So when I do that with a credit card, it doesn't work because the, the wallet actually prevents the reader from reading the, the, uh, um, the RFID uh, signal from the reader to the card. But when I use my ID from work, which is the same concept, there's a small chip inside the card. There's a little module next to the door. You wave it in front of the door. The door opens up. You can access doors, access buildings, access equipment and stuff like that with the use of those cards. Those cards, my, my company ID, works in this wallet. And that's actually a cool thing because um, I didn't want to have to like take out my card like every single time I have to go from one room to another or walk in and out of buildings or... Um, you know, access a piece of equipment or a device or something like that, which we do all the time at work. I didn't want to have to pull out my ID every single time and do that. And plus, sometimes, you know, you're walking up to a door, you got your hands full. It's nice to just have the thing in your pocket and just kind of twerk your fanny in front of it and then it opens up the door for you and, you know, it's, it's all good. So the, the funny part is, is that the, the uh, RFID reader for my uh, work ID works fine with the card in my wallet, but the credit cards don't. Now what I understand is, how I understand this, is that most of the corporate ID, RFID cards operate on a different frequency, like an older technology, as far as, because they're not smart cards. And then the smart cards, the credit cards and stuff like that, is a different frequency. And so these wallets actually block the frequency for the smart cards, but they don't block the frequency for your, you know, your RFID, you know, proximity cards to get in and out of buildings and stuff like that at work. Um, so that's actually, that's like a win-win. It's like, you know, it protects my credit cards, but it doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't cause me any extra work for, uh, you know, my IDs at work. That's great. I, I really love that. It's actually like a feature that I would advertise on this thing. So I don't know if that's true of everybody, but that's true for me. And I've read on the internet a few places that most RFID systems do that, like the little sleeves you put your cards in and stuff like that. Most of them will block the signal for the smart cards, but they won't block the signal, um, the, the different frequency signal for the uh, for the, the company ID cards and stuff like that. So that's actually a really cool feature that I like about it. It's been made it like like secure and super usable. So I like that a lot. Um, not that I could twerk in front of the door too much, but you know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. So to show you how this works, um, this back plate holds basically um, this is kind of lashed to this uh, elastic band. Okay. And then this sort of floats and can rise up and down when you have that loosened up. And then that's where you put in all your cards. And the, uh, the paracord along the bottom and along the sides keeps the cards from, from sliding out when you have the thing opened up. And then I usually keep any money or anything like that, uh, receipts and things like that, just in the back um, underneath the elastic strap. Okay, and that's how I usually do that. And um, one of the things I've done... I'm just going to stick to the... Okay, one of the things I've done is I have this... Uh, this go comb. I think my sister gave me that for Christmas so a few years ago or something like that. You know, you gotta comb the beard, you know, keep that in tow so it doesn't look like a beaver exploded on your face. And uh, one of the things um, I like to do, and the reason why I like this, I've always carried this in my wallets, but I actually put this in first and it kind of like acts as this extra backing plate to the whole thing. And it actually really complements the system really well. And then I just put my cards on top of that. And it keeps all that separated from the back where I keep my cash and 
a few receipts that I that I do. I found that not having a big bulky wallet doesn't it doesn't turn into a catch all. The, sometimes wallets just do that. You wind up just stuffing so much crap in them, like receipts and stuff like that, that they just wind up getting out of control. Um, a minimalist wallet like the Trabex really prevents you from doing that. And as far as like the usability of it, I've found it, you know, I typically keep um, the things I use more often up to the front and then the things I use less often to the back. So like my ID and my debit card and stuff like that are usually right up in the front. And then in the back are some of the cards I don't carry, that I don't use as much. And I've never had a problem. There's a little bit of a learning curve with it. You know, I found that people that do reviews where they've gotten the thing and then use it for like a week or two and then do a review, it really hasn't gotten intuitive for them yet, so they tend to complain about this. Um, I've found now that it's just second nature. It's just part of what I do. And like, I pretty much know where all the cards are and I know that, you know, my debit card's the second card back and I can just, you know, pull that out and use it no problem. And I just intuitively just stick it right back in the same spot. And if I'm in a big hurry or, or whatever and I accidentally, you know, maybe put it more towards the back than I normally do, you know, like stick it way back here. You know, and then the next time I use it, I'm like, I'm like, oh, it's not where it normally is. It's just boop, boop, boop. Oh, there it is. And it's really easy to find it. You know, it's not hard. It's not a hard thing to get used to, really. Um, but the fact that I've used it for as long as I have, it's just it's just become so second nature for uh, to pull out cards out of this thing and just being able to put them right back in the same spot. And it's just it's, it, it just gets to be very intuitive and second nature. Um, it doesn't take that long to really do it. But if you don't give it a chance and use it for a little bit and just kind of get that learning curve through, um, you, you know, it's, it's you might not have fully adapted to it yet. So it is a little bit different system than if you're coming from a bifold wallet or something like that. The biggest uh, con I've had, the biggest thing that I that I sort of knock this wallet for is it doesn't have a dedicated system to holding cash and, and, and receipts and stuff like that. You just kind of tuck them underneath the the band there and and they can you know they can be a little hard to get i've never had anything fall out of this wallet in any way but uh you know i've often found myself wishing that there was a little bit better system um specifically designed in the wallet that would still be not take away from the minimalist approach and the slim uh design of the wallet but allow us something that maybe had a little bit more feature for uh you know real world usage for carrying cash and cards and and all that sort of stuff and that's where the axis comes in which is this guy right here so this is the Travex axis and the cool thing about this is they've stripped away all those sort of extemporaneous features like the bottle opener and and all that so in the finger grooves and they've really just whoops they really just kind of stripped it down um, to its its base alloy of, of what a Travex is, just a really simple wallet. And then what they've done is they've added this this flap panel to the back of it here, this hinged panel to the back. Um, and then this part here functions not exactly, but much like um, the traditional, uh, the, uh, the Travex original. So we'll just take out a couple of cards here and stick them right up here. So it functions much like a traditional Travex, um, the original, just like that. Okay. And then here we have a nice little place where we can stash our cash and our credit card, or excuse me, our credit card receipts and things like that. So I'll take out a little bit of cash I have here. So, you know, we can stick that right in there, close that up. And a nice little place specifically dedicated to our cash. You can even access that without opening up the entire wallet, which is nice. But even if you do, you can just pop that open and access your cash and things without loosening up where your cards are, which is, which is a really nice feature too. Um, and so this is a wallet I feel has been specifically designed to sort of deal with that issue that that I've had. Not that it's a make or break for me. I love the original and I think it's super useful and intuitive. But, you know, there's there's those few times when you just kind of wish you had a little something dedicated for your cash. And uh, so that's pretty cool. Now, a buddy of mine that also has the Travex original, he uses a little money clip in addition to it. So he would have no use for something like this. He's perfectly happy with this because he doesn't use this to carry his cash in. He just has a little money clip. 
And because he's been a money clip guy, he always, always used money clips. And so this is kind of combining the best of both worlds, a little money clip there with a nice little card sleeve. And, but still keeping that, that, that same sort of philosophy and usability of a Travex. So that's super interesting to me and I'm really excited to start using this guy. It's um, a little slimmer. It uh, seems to me to be kind of pare it down to exactly what you would want out of a minimalist wallet like this. And um, it doesn't have the features that you don't need, does have a few extra features that you do need. And uh, I think that is a, a really great design and I'm really excited to get this out. Of course, I will start using this immediately. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and depopulate my uh, Travex original and switch over to the, the Axis and start using this guy. And I will report back to you how I like it, give you a more in-depth review. Probably not gonna wait nine months like I did with this one, um, but I'll definitely get some, some use on this one and uh, tell you how I feel. I have a suspicion that if, if, if this really does work as well as the original does, as intuitive as the original does, with the addition of a place to put your cash and stuff like that, I think this thing's gonna be a home run. I have pretty high hopes for this thing. So, um, like I said, I'm already a huge Travex fan and, and very used to the system. And uh, by adding in just that extra little, little feature that I've actually always been wanting in this wallet, uh, I think this is gonna be a home run. So I'm really looking forward to that. So I'm gonna start using that one and I'll report back to you how I like that. In the meantime, I have an extra original right here. So it's the same one as this guy here, just a different color. This one's the raw aluminum, this one's anodized black. And uh, I will go ahead and give this away to one lucky viewer, and it could be you. All you have to do is two things. The first thing you have to do is you have to be subscribed to the channel. So if you're a, a long time subscriber, existing subscriber to the channel, thank you very much for supporting the channel and continuing to stop by. I really appreciate your patronage. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button right now. Okay, so the second thing you gotta do is you have to post a comment down in the comment section of this video. So go ahead and scroll down and tippity tap a little comment for me. Uh, tell me that you'd like to be entered into the uh, giveaway for a free Travex wallet and um, you know, maybe say something else too. Maybe say hi. Maybe say something you like about the Travex wallets. Uh, maybe something that you like about the channel or whatever. Whatever you want to say, you know. Say that you want in the giveaway and eh, maybe, you know, a little something else. It's up to you. Be creative. Um, but all you have to do is subscribe to the channel and post below. And then what I'll do is on the last day of the month, August 31st, which is next Wednesday, um, I'm going to go ahead at the end of the day and close the uh, the entries. And then on September 1st, I will at random choose a person who has qualified, is subscribed, and did post. Um, and I will contact you on Facebook, or excuse me, I'll contact you here on YouTube and uh, give you my email address and uh, we'll go ahead and get all the, the, uh, the, uh, the details panned out and I'll go ahead and send you this. Travex original wallet. So there you go. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, the, on the website at dynamicprepper.com. Thanks everybody for watching. Big thank you for Travex for hooking us up with a couple of wallets and I hope that the new owner of this one enjoys it as much as I have. I'm pretty sure you will. And uh, so go ahead and get involved. Subscribe free Travex wallet for it, one lucky viewer, and uh, stay tuned, we got a ton of really cool stuff coming up in the near future, more giveaways too, so uh, I'm pretty excited. So with that being said, don't forget about the uh, Tac Pack promo, Dynamic Prepper Pack uh, gets you a free gift, which is the uh, the Hex Mag at uh, Tac Pack, you can check them out at TacPack.com, don't forget about that Dynamic Prepper Pack, other than that, take it easy.